Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Sunday Interview. My guest today was born into the famous Fidipote ruling house of Ijebu land. She once served with the federal government of Nigeria to promote tourism in the country and is also a media practitioner. You will be meeting my guest after this time out. I am Aziza Tolalua. I'll be right back. Welcome back. My guest today is a seasoned broadcaster, so she is a senior colleague. She is an author, as well as the former Director General of the Nigeria Tourism Development Corporation. I am talking about Dame Omotayo Omotosho, a member of the Federal Republic. Thank you for joining us on the show. It's my pleasure, Haziz, and how are you today? I'm fine. Now, Good for to someone see you. in her mid 50s, uh, you look quite radiant. What is the secret? <laughs> Aziza, well, I must say that um, I don't allow anything to worry me. I mm. use simple white powder, wow. sometimes with MAC. I like MAC, but it's a bit oily for me. So mm -hmm. I normally would touch it with a bit of white powder. Mm -hmm. But really, the secret is if you don't allow anything to worry you, by virtue of knowing that the control of everything is not within your hands, True. and you are not a lazy person, you are hardworking, you are focused, you are prayerful, then you leave the rest to God. Indeed, well said. Now, how was growing up like for you? Growing up was um, much of fun. Much of fun because daddy and mommy were core civil servants, Dad, Daddy worked with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Mommy worked with the Federal Ministry of Health as a nurse. And they instilled a lot of discipline, mm. dented with love. Being civil servants again, they would tell us, my father has a slang. He says, I'd rather be hungry than go to work and appropriate the fund Hmm. That is not mine, to my pocket. I will be adding more to the poverty that fills the land. And I learned that from him. Okay. More importantly, Daddy comes from a royal family. Ah. Yes, my father happened to be the sixth born of the king of Ijebu, the Aujale. Really? Of Ijebu land. Dolapo will tell you that sometime. Ah. Dolapo knows much of that because oh. we're talking from about my producer. Similar, <laughs> similar access. Okay, so let's uh, have a peek into your educational background. Which schools mm -hmm. did you go to? What you okay, studied? Okay, yeah. Um, I started my nursery school as two years, three years, if I remember, three years old uh, at um, Sacred Heart Nursery School, Ibadan, because we're born Catholics. Uh, everybody would know the Badichos in Ichapodi were Catholics. So daddy and mommy would send every one of us to the Catholic school. So I went to Sacred Heart Nursery School. I went to Christ School for my secondary school. By God's grace, I got quite a lot of colleagues that went to Christ School. Um, our former Solid Minerals Minister, who is now Governor Ikiti, mm -hmm. Governor-elect, um, mm -hmm. Governor Fayemi, went to Christ School, and a host of others. Uh, former Minister of Finance, Shegwa Ganga, oh. went to Christ School. So in any case, I went to Christ School. And then when I finished with Christ School, I went to Polytechnic Ibadan for my basic studies. I was there for just one year okay. uh, in preparation for my university education. And um, at Poly, I applied to two universities. I've always wanted to go to Unilac because I had my senior ones that attended Unilac. <laughs> so I applied I to Unilac and Unilac <laughs> gave me the uh -huh. admission I wanted. So I finished from University of Lagos. I studied psychology, mm -hmm. uh, graduated uh, from the Faculty of Social Sciences. And then 
I remembered when I was in Unilag, a lot of my friends, whenever we talk and chat, they said, I thought, well, you, I wouldn't go study anything difficult. Law, those big, big, big books. Do so well in psychology and go to a broadcast station to mm. get yourself uh, tutored in broadcasting. That's where you need to cut it, make sure you cut your teeth. And I keep on asking, why? They say, there's something trainable about your voice. Mm. A lot of my friends told me that since I was 16, I was 15, young girl at the university then, that there's something trainable about your voice. It was actually a friend's mother that first told me that. So, and she's a broadcaster too. Oh. So when she said, something trainable about my voice, I said, oh really, okay, okay. I'll think of it, Ma, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. And so when I finished from the university, coincidentally, when NYC was going to do their posting, they posted me to NTA Baden hmm. without masterminding it. So I went to NTA Baden, that was 1986. By the time 86 stroke 87, by the time I got to NTA, I was there for just a few months when we heard that the Broadcasting Corporation of Oyo State was recruiting youth coppers mm. and they were paying almost 200% more than what NTA was paying coppers. So a lot of us left NTA. NTA. We were young then. It's like, oh, we need some kudos, we need some cash. So we left NTA for BCOS. So I went to BCOS, that's where I finished my youth service, mm -hmm. and I was retained. I was with them for a few years, maybe about two or three, and then came back to Lagos, where I had most of my family members. So came to Lagos, continued my television presentation and production, and then worked closely with NTA Network as a television freelance producer. Okay. Yeah, so that's when I started towards Greater Nigeria, ah. and that's when I started Paysetters on the Beat. Those were the two programs I started at that time. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, towards the Greater Nigeria is still on mm -hmm. till today. Mm -hmm. And that's about almost 30 years ago. Wow, that's amazing. Now let's talk about your family. How did you meet your husband? You already talked about your <laughs> You're parents. You're asking too much, How did you meet your husband? Why didn't and you prepare you me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an interesting one, Aziza. Um, I met my husband at the NYC orientation camp. In actual ah. fact, when I met the DJ NYC a few weeks ago in Abuja, and we were chatting, and I told him, oh, we would love to interview you. <laughs> he so was so NYC excited. Did, NYC did a lot for you. <laughs> they did a lot. He was so excited. He told me they have an in-house magazine. He's going to tell them that the next cover page should be Mrs. Omotaya Montesho and her husband. But oh. well, my husband doesn't like publicity at all. He's a very, very conservative man, but married a media personality. So going back to your question, um, the posting came and then I was posted to Oyo State, as I said, before we were posted to NTA Baden and he went to UI Alumni Center, we would normally have this orientation uh, period, orientation camp. So we met on camp. I was, um, I was a platoon leader of my own platoon, and he was platoon leader of his own platoon. Mm. We had about 21 or 22 platoons then. And it's a very, very interesting story because by the time we met, we just got chatting like good friends at the Mami Market, mm -hmm. where you go buy something. Mm -hmm. We got chatting. And then a few days after, they told us we we're going to have a competition volleyball competition and they wanted to know who's going to emerge the winner out of all the platoons so they pitched my own platoon against, against his, his. <laughs> I can and a lot of other platoons had already uh, had their matches and some winners had emerged so it was like the final uh, of the finals that they pitched mine and his I didn't know that he already told a friend of mine that he was interested in me. Mm. That friend of mine, yes, Kofu, Kofu and my husband went to University of Illinois together. So he had his eyes on you and not <laughs> and, the match. And, and not the match, <laughs> exactly. And I didn't know. Two days to the tournament, to the contest, Kofu and I were chatting again. And Kofu told me, Tayo, I'm sure you know Shedun likes you. He likes you so much. He has told me that he likes you and he's taking you to the altar. When you altar called, Danny, is that the way they take somebody to the altar? So she said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. But you know where I'm going? I said, where are you going? She says, if I were you, I would tell him 
if you really want me and you like me that much, because at that time he has started toasting me. He has told me he's interested in me. I told him to give me time to think about it. So Kofo said, what are you thinking about? Just give him a bait. And that bait is for us to win this tournament, <laughs> he must not play. <laughs> I'm sure you will laugh. Did you say that to him? I did. You made the demand. I, I, had to oh make the, I had to make the demand. Well, you have a good friend that oh. is pushing you. <laughs> <laughs> and she knows him more than myself. She, she told me, ah, good things come in small packages and it's not easy to come by. So you tell him that, okay, since I told you I'll think about it, I've thought about it, Shegun. You're a nice person. I like your personality. No doubt about that. But we have a deal. And he said, what's the deal? Then I told him, winning this tournament means a lot to me because I'm a female platoon leader. We had just about three lady platoon leaders out of 22 platoons. And that was the final of it. You are a male. It shouldn't mean so much to you. If we win, wow, we will go to town. And so must you play? Because all my friends are saying, because you play so well, definitely if you are within your own team, you are going to win us. Then he looked at me and said, you want me to betray? You want me to betray my people? I said, no, no, no. I'm not saying you betray them, but give them an excuse. He said he will think about it. Five minutes to the time that we're going to start, all of us were ready. His own team were there. He was the only one they were waiting for. By the time my husband came out, he was in bandages. Oh. <laughs> Cream bandage here and there, and lean pain. I was so excited, but I didn't show it. <laughs> it would have been so obvious <laughs> that there was nothing wrong with him. He's doing it because Look, of tile. They, they could make a movie of your story. I think we should. <laughs> so eventually, when should. you start dating, how many years did you date before getting married, and how long has your marriage been? Okay, we had a three-year courtship. Okay. They had a three-year courtship, and then we got married in um, 1990. Oh. But I, I, I got to know him in 1986. So I've known him for about 32 years as a good friend, mm -hmm. close friend of mine, for about 32 years. But we've been in marriage, 1990 to now, about 28, 28 I, years. I know you have a, three daughters, right? Three daughters and, and a boy. A boy. <laughs> and I know you have a, a story about how the boy came by. <laughs> Don't ask me about the story. <laughs> but please ask any question you want to ask. You have a, your kids. We just need to know about your kids. Where are they now? Thank you. Uh, by God's grace, uh, I got three girls and uh, a boy. Um, the first one, they have two two years gap in between. Okay. Uh, 26 going 27, 24 going 25, 23 going 20, 24, uh, or 22 okay, so going 23. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, by God's grace, one is a social scientist. The second is a lawyer. Uh, in the and states the as well, yeah, and the third one is a civil engineer. Mm. The three girls. What about the boy? <laughs> the boy is a nine-year-old, okay. as a young boy, still schooling here with me in Nigeria. Uh, he schools at Green Springs uh, School mm -hmm. in uh, Anthony, uh, Lagos. Mm -hmm. He came almost, almost eighteen years waiting, if I could say that, eighteen years gap. Really? Yeah. He jokingly tells them that they are old enough to be his mother <laughs> and that I'm the grandma. <laughs> I love being called a grandma anyway. <laughs> so what is your favorite meal? Yeah, I love veggies. Okay. I love vegetables. If you put rice and plantain, uh, fried rice, whatever, pounded yam on one side, and you put cucumbers, uh, pineapple, and uh, watermelon on another side, I'll go for the veggies. So every time I, I eat once a day, real food. I don't, I'm not a food freak. Yeah. I don't like food that much, real food. I take that once a day and that's around five o'clock. Oh. But in the morning, I must take my cucumbers and watermelon. Do you drink alcohol? Not at all. Oh, oh, I've wine. never tried it. Do you listen to music? And if so, who is your favorite musician? I listen to music. I love Dolly Parton. I love Dolly's coat of many colors. I was about to ask you if <laughs> coat of many colors was your favorite. Can you sing it for us? <laughs> I like letting my guests sing. So. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Time, yes. I'll try. <laughs> 
The coat of many colours that my mamma made for me, made only from reeds, and I wear it so proudly. Although we had no money, but I was rich as I could be. In my coat of many colours, my mamma made for me, made just for me. <laughs> yes, well done. <laughs> clap well, if you're on a clap. Well done. Thank you very much. That was, that was quite good. I have some more questions for you, but we just have to go on a short break at this point. Are you point. come back again? I thought exactly. we went down. That was the first that. part of it. All right, stay with us on the show. We'll go on a short break. My guest is Dame Omotayo, Omoto Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My guest is still Dame Omotayo on Motosho, the former DG of NTDC. Thank you for staying with us You're on welcome. the show. Now, you were appointed in, into that position in 2000. Yeah. What was the experience like for you? Well, um, it was a lifetime experience, as he said, uh, because I was appointed at a time when um, tourism was not well known, not well appreciated in Nigeria. I was appointed at a time when I learned the federal government had already tabled all the agencies that were moribund mm. and they wanted to um, scrap them. Exactly, they wanted to scrap the agencies. And NTDC was one. There were three directorate positions that were available to be uh, filled up at that time Director of Special Duties, Director of Marketing and Promotion, and Director of Finance and Admin. So with those three positions, I knew I needed to inject private sector life, private sector strategies into doing government business. Mm. Because if they've been doing it the way government has been doing it, and they're more rebound, then we needed to change. So I brought in those three dynamic, very, very resourceful and creative gentlemen. So by the time they came, we sat together and we realized that the first thing we needed to do was to identify the states that were ready for tourism. Not all states were ready, and I didn't want to fool myself. We visited the 36 states, so that you don't think maybe we chose the ones we liked and mm -hmm. the ones we didn't like. I took it upon myself to go from one state governor to the other without wasting time. We had about six states to start with, and we carefully realized that Selecting them, they also came from six geopolitical zones. Mm, which made your work easy. It made my work easy. And they couldn't accuse me. Nobody could accuse me that um, uh, mm. being tribalistic, I made sure it, it touched everybody that we, need, we needed to touch. So with the six geopolitical zones, we had the governors that were ready for us. And we ran with it. I must tell you that at the time I assumed office, NTDC was not well funded at all when it was listed to be uh, scrapped. How could it be funded? I remember the first budget was about 90 million or 85 million that was never released. Wow. It was never released. It was like, what would I do with this? Well, thank goodness for creativity and the private sector guys that I brought in mm. to mix up with the civil servant. They told me, ma'am, we can't fold our hands here and tell Nigerians that because we're not funded, we're not going to work. You have a lot of friends in the private sector. Why don't you let us appoint corporate tourism partners mm -hmm. for development, CTPD, corporate tourism <coughs> partners <coughs> for development. Okay. And so you get a lot of multinationals, a lot of banks, insurance companies, financial institutions, and that's the way we funded all I did. Now, you really achieved a lot during your time from what you just told me. So are you impressed now at the state of tourism in Nigeria since you left? I, I am not. I am not impressed. I am not impressed because it's unfortunate that in Nigeria there is no continuity. It's not because the person that is there is not working. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to do with the personality of who is there. The person that is there is uh, well exposed and um, a dynamic gentleman uh, for Longshot Kuka. So I believe that um, he, he could have done better. But to the extent that some projects that I started which were very good, especially the Presidential Council on Tourism. I knew, having traveled far and wide, ever before I was even appointed, I'd been in the media, and I loved traveling and adventure. 
having gone to the tourist islands of the Caribbean, I visited about 15 of the Caribbean islands before I became mm. Digitourism. So I knew what tourism was all about. And I knew that tourism would not start and end in my office. Neither would it start and end in Abuja. It cuts across. For you to make success of tourism, whoever is in charge of immigration must be tourism oriented. Mm. Whoever is in charge of aviation must be tourism oriented. Whoever is in charge of environment, our environment must be appealing, must be beautiful, must be friendly, must be tourism oriented. Okay. So I took it upon myself to go to my tourism minister, Boma Bromilo Jack, nice woman from River State, and said, Madam, this is my memo to the president. But you as my minister, I want you to endorse it so that you and I will go to see the president and let him know that they must establish a presidential council on tourism. And what does the PCT mean? It cuts across. All those agencies and sectors I've mentioned a few minutes ago will be under one umbrella presided by the number one person in the country, Mr. President. State governors that are ready for tourism and they have viable tourism products who are part of the PCT and of course the DG Tourism, the Secretariat. We would meet once in six months so that I would have identified the tourism products we needed to package, we needed to refurbish, we needed to develop for a particular state. The state governor and I had been working together we're waiting for the time we'll go to PCT mm. to get the presidential approval. And believe you me, within two, three, two, two and a half hours meeting, a lot of approvals were given. A lot of implementation started. And we were able to make a headway in tourism. I didn't want to be master of all trade, jack of none. So I told myself, I don't want to do everything related to tourism. What are the areas of strength of my nation, Nigeria? Cultural tourism. Ecotourism, adventure tourism, slavehood tourism. Those were the four. So I said, okay, where do we have those four? Slavehood tourism, Badagri, slave road, is history in its own, is a monument. It can be packaged into a tourism uh, attraction, together with how the slave trade even started, how they boarded in Calabar. Mm. So with the Lagos State government working closely with Cross River, under the synergy of NTDC and the PCT, we were able to do the Black Heritage Festival. Oh. We started the Black Heritage Festival during I the time remember. of Governor Ahmed Tinubu, mm -hmm. where a lot of American mayors and some other mayors uh, uh, in South America came to Nigeria wanting to trace their, their, their roots. And it was so, so, how would I put it now? Awesome and amazing because we make sure we work closely even with the custodian of our heritage. Now, let's talk about your philanthropic uh, gestures and uh, mentorship program. How many people have you been able to help and how many people are on hand? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, it's quite commendable anyway. Thank you, thank you, my dear uh, Azizat. Um, I, I must say that um, there are quite a lot. Uh, if I'm to figure, if I'm to place a hand on the figure, I would say hundreds of people. As a television personality, a lot of people know me that I don't know. And often a time, they approach me. I like being approachable. My friends are the cleaners at the secretariat, the security men, hmm. the uh, drivers. I go, oh, how are you? Why is everything nice, madame? That's the Ogawa, he's my friend. But the way I'll greet them, you'll think they're my relation. But it doesn't cost me anything, that's me. And so because they see me approachable, they now come to me and ask me, ma'am, I need help. I help, okay. Ma'am, I need help, I don't know how to say it. I can't even tell my Oga because she snaps. So I have to talk to your driver. Your driver said, that's the correct person to talk to. So it amazes me. I never knew while I was gone to one uh, minister or governor's office or the DG's office, somebody was talking to my driver. Then I would say, okay, how can I help you? I said, let me just have your number. I will send a text. Whenever you are less busy, I will come and see you, ma'am. It has a lot to do with my children. I have three children. I'm struggling to send them to school. And I want one of them, one girl, three boys, I want the girl to be like you. Mm. So let me come and see. That, that, that moves me. And it's like, oh, 
that's okay. I'll give the person the card and I go. And believe you me, they follow up. He will call me, I will listen. And that's how I get a lot of the people I help. In my neighborhood down the road, you see the uh, Bali woman, you see the Alagbado seller, you see the son of the mechanic, you see the vulcanizer down the road. Are you sensitive to their plight? Mm. Because we need to ask ourselves, why are we alive today? What is God's perfect purpose to have sent us to the surface of the earth? It's not about our children. It's not about our husband. If you are blessed, it's not about you. Are you radiating the blessing to as many people as possible? Are you touching lives? My mother taught me since I was young, don't ever go to bed without asking yourself, what good have Thank you done today? today? Mm. Who have you added value to today? And that propels me. All right, finally <laughs> now, would you at any point or are you right now considering eventually into politics? I would say no. Okay. I would say no because I believe there are a lot of ways you can contribute to nation building okay. without necessarily being a politician. Um, I'm a professional person. People call us technocrats. I enjoy what I do and I contribute my own quota to nation building through my dialogue program, through communicating. It's a public enlightenment program. I feel so happy and satisfied with what I, what I do. But if my nation or the government deem it fit to call me to take up another national assignment, okay. I would oblige. Because that's a way to also contribute more tangibly to the development of my nation. <coughs> Those that do it, I respect them. Okay. Is their calling. I don't think it's my calling to contest. Your own calling is to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Not really on TV. My own calling is to touch lives. Mm. I could be on TV and still being so insensitive to people. Sure. My own calling is to touch lives. Mm. I'm so interested. And that's why I'm so used to the youngsters, the youths of Nigeria. I got a cross with them in church and outside church, uh, in my place of work, wherever I go. I, 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 how would I put it now? I love mentoring, mm. you use that word. Okay. I love mentoring. And a lot of them would tell me, oh, mommy, I'd love to be like you. I had always wanted to be a broadcaster, but I thought broadcasters don't have money. They don't <laughs> get rich. But you are rich, you are comfortable. Yeah. And then I tell them, it <laughs> takes creativity. Indeed. Broadcasters do get rich. Mm. When you're hardworking and you have a creative talent and you are dynamic with what you do, You'll get there. All right. Thank you very much for featuring on our show today. It's a pleasure. It's a big pleasure. And I uh, must say, I enjoyed every bit of it, as you said. Thank you very much. And with that, we'll wrap it up on the show for the week. My guest was Dame Omotayo Omotosho, the former DG of NTDC and popularly called Madam Tourism. She's also a media practitioner and an author. For all your inquiries, send all of them to the Sunday interview at TVC News. Dot TV. Until I come your way next week, I am Azizat Olaudua. Bye for now.